Welcome to Start Here, Go Everywhere. I am Linda Moyo, an alumna of Jobs for America's graduates. On this podcast, we bring you incredible guests from all walks of life, offering the skills to educate, inspire, and challenge you to succeed in both school, on the job skills, and in personal life, leading to productive and rewarding careers. I am so excited to have Christian Dunn because they are part of the JAG community, the JAG students, the JAG family, and I cannot wait to hear their story. So Christian, how are you today? I'm well. Thanks for having me here. Um, get the opportunity. Yeah, I am so excited to get to hear a little bit more about your story. Uh, we chatted a little bit before this, but I want to expand and just get started by you sharing how you got involved with JAG. Yep, so I first got involved with J A J M G um in twenty nineteen. Um at my trade school we had um mm. some people from J M G come to um and present. And so I was able to get involved through that way. Um and ever since it's been a whirlwind. Um I have <laughs> um been able to go to their legislative days where we um uh, go to our state legislation and meet state representatives and um, share our stories and how mm. uh, the J JMG program has helped us. Um, and then I have also been able to join the Youth Advisory Council that kind of oversees a lot of like programming and uh, events for our JMGs across the state. Um, mm -hmm. So that's also been exciting. Um, I've been on that for about a year and a half. So yeah. yeah, I really love it. Um, and I get to meet with so many people that are um, just great people. I get to network with them, um, get to meet other people my age who are in different universities so we can kind of um, connect on that level as well. Yeah. So you mentioned how you started with the program in 2019. Was that around COVID time? And how was that experience becoming part of the JAG family during COVID? So it was right before the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I was able to meet with the JMG team um, then until about May. Um, so I was, um, I got to meet everyone. I got to go to my first legislative day, um, mm. but then COVID happened. We're still obviously in the COVID pandemic. So, uh, we don't really have a lot of face-to-face -face events, um, mm -hmm. just so we're all safe. Um, we No one could have expected that we would be in this situation, but we've made it work um, through virtual meetings, through phone calls. Um, my program specifically, they uh, have a Facebook group, so we communicate a lot through that way. Um, there's yeah. opportunities to learn things, meet others. So what is an opportunity or something that you have learned the most out of Jack, because I mean, you have the trauma informed care, you have career readiness preparation, you have all these aspects of Jack, and each person gets something different from it. So, what did you get from Jack? I think I got is support. Um, mm. They have so many resources that are available, um, and I guess I never. Um, I don't know where I would be really without JMG. Uh, they have provided mm -hmm. me a lot of support. Even if it's just someone I need to talk to, they're always there. Yeah. Um, if I need to call them, they're a good listening. Um, so yeah, that's probably one thing that I got from the program is the amazing support system. Um, they also provide, like I said, resources and opportunities like this uh, Youth Advisory Council. Um, I wouldn't even be in that if it wasn't for my JMG specialist. So, um, yeah, those are just two uh, great resources. So tell me about this new program that is, they're almost like siblings with uh, JMG, which is Jobs for Michigan's uh, graduates. Tell me how you got involved with that. So I am a part of the Youth Solutions Youth Advisory Council. Um, mm -hmm. They kind of oversee a lot of JMG programs within our state. Um, I was introduced to the Youth Advisory Council um, 
in about late 2020, um, I have been able to plan events such as our career um, uh, CDC events, um, which is our conference, career conference. Um, I've also been able to plan our graduation. Um, we had our second annual graduation just a few a month ago, and I was able to present um, the Youth Advisory Council to all the graduates as a way to stay connected. Um, we also have something called the Alumni Network, which is all ah. the GMG alumni in our state where we can share resources, we can um, network with each other, we can, um, I guess, just create a sense of community, um, even though it is uh, virtual since the pandemic. Yeah. So alongside that, you are a college student. Tell me uh, what that experience has been being a college student, being in a pandemic, being highly involved with important work that I'm sure keeps you busy. Yep. So I go to the University of Michigan Flint. Um, currently, I'm studying healthcare administration. Um, I was in student government for a few months um, where I was the director of diversity, equity, and inclusion, where mm. we um, diver uh, promoted diversity on our campus. I promoted equity and inclusion on our campus through different campus departments and different things. Um, we wrote a lot of, I guess, resolutions in support of things. So June is Pride Month. We wrote a resolution yeah. for Pride Month. Um, to say that we support our students of the LGBTQIA community. Um, we also wrote um, statements against the um, Roe v. Wade um, in support of abortions and healthcare for all. Um, and an another part of that is I was offered a position on a statewide task force for voting engagement on college campuses. Um, um, so I create events on my campus that are um, that tell people how to vote. Um, we don't mm. say you need to vote one way. We let them know mm. how to vote, that they should think with an open mind how they want to vote. Um, we're a nonpartisan group, so we really try to um, promote voting on our campus, um, even having people register to vote. So in the fall, we'll have events on my college campus. Um, that help people to vote will have probably like um, infographics and media graphics for people to look at to give them a way how to vote, uh, show them a way. Um, yeah. I was elected as the our media relations um, mm. in our leadership community. So I, me and my committee, we, um, we create graphics for all the participating universities. I think we have around 18 or 19 universities that we as a committee represent. So we're able to create all these graphics and share them with all these universities. Um, so that's a great way that I can still work with in my student government, but also mm -hmm. alongside um, to help people. Yeah. Christian, it sounds like you are doing so many great things. And I wish when I was in high school, I was exposed to uh, even more opportunities that would then lead me, whether I choose that college career path, to be involved in the same kind of things that you are. So for high schoolers who are about to, who just graduated maybe, or who are going to graduate in the following year, what advice would you have for them to get involved in the kind of things that you are involved with? So one thing I would say, there are so many different opportunities after college that you could pursue. You could go to college, you could um, go to the military, you could mm -hmm. um, go and get a job. There's so many different ways. Um, one great way is going to college because there's so many um great resources through your college that you can get. Um, yeah. There's so many opportunities and people that you'll meet. You can join clubs and organizations to stay connected with um, students. Um, you can help make a change on your campus. Um, there's so many resources. On my campus, we have a um, counseling and psychological services, which they mm. um, offer 
offering therapy for students. Um, we have so many resources like that available. We have our Center for Gender and Sexuality where um, we celebrate who you are as an individual. Um, we also have a lot of events put on by student organizations. So yeah. you can have an option to meet other students. And even if you can't be in person, there are so many opportunities uh, virtually for you. Um, so my advice would be is get connected with um, your group. Find who best represents you and yeah. stay connected with them and be an advocate for yourself and your other students. Um, there are so many um, changes that you can help make. A lot of people have been talking about advocacy and it usually used to be be an advocate for other people, but it's now huge to advocate for yourself. What does that really look like? And for you, uh, what's an example of when you have advocated for yourself? So one way I have, well, I advocate for myself is um, knowing my limit, knowing um, mm. my mental health, where how good I'm doing, how bad I'm doing, um, knowing when to stop things. Um, mm -hmm. So a great example would be like, I transitioned from student government to the statewide task force because I yeah. just, I couldn't do both at the time. Um, I couldn't give my, my all to both. So I had to choose mm -hmm. between um, which one better understood me and what I can make a difference. Um, yeah. And so I think when um, mental health is a big thing uh, for me, um, there's good days, there's bad days. Um, that's why I'm, I really like how my campus has a counseling center where I can go and talk mm -hmm. to someone if, you know, I'm feeling a bit down or I can go to a student event and um, see my friends and be so happy. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So I just graduated with a psychology degree. So anything mental health, I'm like for it. I support it. And I understand because I feel like more than ever, mental health is just people are struggling everywhere. And we're now, you know, trying to overcome that stigma of saying you can get help, you can do this. So how would you uh, advise, especially JAG students who may be struggling with mental health, but they're still resistant to opening up or to getting help? What kind of resources do you think would work for them? So one resource is our, um, at least for our JMG programs here in Michigan, we have something called Coffee with a Purpose, where mm. um, we talk about different issues and youth are able to be panelists on um, these at these events. So I was a panelist at one for mental health. So that mm -hmm. very, um, I got to share my experience with mental health, uh, resources for mental health and how to, um, when to get help. Um, I think a lot of people struggle with it and it's a lot, there's a big st stigma around like, mental health um, yeah. that they might not be comfortable with talking about um, with you or with anyone else. Um, but uh, there's resources that we can share um, that help these students. There are so many um, different ways that if you're struggling with mental health, you can uh, receive help. Um, there's a lot of different websites that you can go to, um, a lot of apps that you could download on your phone that help you calm down, that help your stress go down. Um, and I advise like finding something that you enjoy um, to yeah. do and pursue that. Um, learn more about um, different ways that can help your stress levels or anxiety go down. Um, another thing is, um, this one involves a therapist going to therapy, the confidentiality. So others don't, mm. can't find out if you're, if you're safe with your therapist. Um, so the with going to therapy, it's a lot of uh, confidentiality. So mm -hmm. you can go to therapy without knowing or um, having others find out that you are there. Um, it's a safe space where you and your therapist can just talk. Um, they can also provide you with a lot of resources. Um, they can provide you with group uh, therapy. 
um, with others who are struggling just like you and mm -hmm. trying to find or make a difference in your life and try to impact um, your life positively. I know we mentioned a few minutes ago that it is Pride Month uh, and most people who are part of the LGBTQIA plus community often struggle, whether that's with mental health or identity and fitting in. Have you found that to be the case with your story or has it been supportive throughout your journey? So at the beginning, it was not as supportive as I would have liked or as it is now. Um, mm. One way that helped me was JP actually played a part in that. Um, I had um, my specialist who I could talk to um, mm. with knowing that what I told her, it wouldn't uh, get out necessarily. Um, yeah. So at the beginning, I really struggled with who I am as a person, um, what I identify as, who I want to be. Um, and specifically with my family, it was very difficult to um, mm. tell them that I was part of the LGBTQIA community because they weren't as supportive as um, I would have liked. Um, yeah. So I kind of had to create, um, a com find a community which um, that I felt comfortable with, um, with people who um, care who I am and don't judge me for who I am. Um, mm -hmm. so I've been able to, now it's a lot more comfortable for me to, um, be who I want to be and make my own journey. Um, it's been hard, but it's, yeah. it's only getting better. Um, I'm meeting great people every day, uh, people who yeah. are supportive of me, um, and who really care for me. That's good. And I love to hear how supportive your JMG program has been, especially your specialist. Um, I think specialists play such a bigger role than having that teacher um, identity. There's so much more than that. They're a support, they're a therapist, they're a support system, they're everything. And to know that um, your JAG specialist was able to guide and help you and just listen to you, uh, that's huge. And I'm really glad that you had that. Um, I would like to know, you're going to graduate college in around 2024, 2025. What's next? What are your dreams? What are your goals? What, what does Christian want to do? Well, I'm still deciding on what I want to do. I don't know if I will ever 100% know what I want to do. Um, yeah. but I'm in a self-discovery phase where, um, I'm invested in learning other things than just things that I like to do. Um, so right now I'm just um, I'm taking classes here. Um, after graduation, I want to get a job. I want to um, start a family. Um, I really want to, I guess, find where I best fit to be a productive member of society, to um, help others who are struggling. Um, and there's so many ways that I could do that. Um, mm -hmm. depending on what I choose to, um, if I choose to be a teacher, I can help students in their self-discovery phases of who they are and who they want to be. And I can be a listening ear for them. Or if yeah. I want to go into healthcare, I'll be able to help people understand, um, and different things pertaining to their health. Um, it just all depends on what I decide in this next couple months on, um, graduation. Um, finding yeah. what I'd like, uh, what I don't necessarily like. Yeah. And I think that is such a beautiful journey to be on. And we live in such a day and time where you can be a teacher for even the next decade and then get into the health administrative uh, part of uh, life and career journey. And so maybe you'll do it all. Maybe you'll just choose one and just continue to climb up. Who knows? But Christian, I would just like to take a moment to acknowledge you, uh, to hear your JAG story and the support that you've had and the resources that were just introduced to you through the JAG program to get you to where you're at now. I mean, you're doing it all, school, you're a leader, uh, just implementing and doing these big things that are changing people's lives. And most importantly, like you mentioned, you're doing what you love 
with the community that supports and loves you back. And so I hope that every JAG student uh, gets to experience uh, what you're experiencing. And whatever you end up doing, like I said, I know that you will continue to be successful. Yep. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it's been an honor. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest themes, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at JAG Students. Thanks again and see you next time.